There are so many crypto networks that you can use and some of them may be EVM compatible. This video will explain what this term really means and why it's so important to understand the difference. Let's first understand a bit about the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM for short. This virtual environment was built on the Ethereum network using the Solidity programming language. This EVM allowed developers to create smart contracts on the platform and made it much easier to build a decentralized application or dApps for short. As a result, Ethereum is one of the largest smart contract platforms with the most dApps built on it. However, Ethereum is not that scalable and may experience some congestion on the network. This will result in high gas fees that you need to pay for every transaction on the network. Other crypto networks have been built that claim to be more scalable compared to Ethereum. To attract developers to build dApps on their network, some of them were made to be EVM compatible. The source code for these networks were also built on Solidity and this allowed developers to easily port their code from Ethereum to these networks. One such example is Uniswap, which is the largest decentralized exchange on the Ethereum network. Since Uniswap source code can be ported over to any EVM compatible network, it has now expanded to other EVM compatible networks like Polygon and Optimism. Now that you know what this term means, here are two ways that you can use to identify an EVM compatible network. The first way is to look at the wallet address of that network. Any wallet address on the Ethereum network will start with the prefix OX, followed by a string of numbers and letters. This format also applies to any EVM compatible network. If your wallet supports multiple EVM compatible networks, you may notice that you are using exactly the same address. For example, we can go to Binance and view all of the wallet addresses that you can use to send USDT. The wallet addresses for BNB Smart Chain and Polygon both start with OX and they are exactly the same as your Ethereum wallet address. Meanwhile, the wallet addresses for the Solana, Tron and Tezos networks all do not start with the prefix OX. This would suggest that they are not EVM compatible. The only exception to this rule is the Harmony One network. Even though the Harmony One network is EVM compatible, there will be two different versions of your wallet address. One of them will start with OX, which is similar to any EVM compatible network. Meanwhile, the other address will start with the prefix one. And you can use the Harmony Block Explorer to convert this address to one that starts with OX. The second method that you can use is to go to chainlist.org. This website contains almost every EVM compatible network and you can add any of them directly to your MetaMask wallet. You can use the search bar to find any of these networks. If the network that you're looking for appears on this website, this will mean that it is EVM compatible. Here's a list of some of the more common EVM compatible networks. There are layer ones that are built to compete with Ethereum and they include Avalanche and the BNB Smart Chain. There are also EVM compatible layer 2s that are built on top of Ethereum. Some examples will include Polygon, Arbitrum and Optimism. Interestingly, not all layer 2s on Ethereum are EVM compatible and one such example is Loopring. Loopring uses ZK rollup technology to increase its scalability. While this technology is not EVM compatible yet, there have been some breakthroughs by Polygon and ZK Sync to create a ZK rollup network that is EVM compatible. Meanwhile, there are many crypto networks that are not EVM compatible, and some of them include Bitcoin, Solana, Tron, and the Terra network. This concept is extremely important if you are looking for a wallet to store your crypto assets. Some wallets like Metamask only support EVM compatible networks. You won't be able to send any assets that exist on the non-EVM compatible network, including Tron or Bitcoin. Meanwhile, other wallets like Trust Wallet or Exodus are actually multi-chain wallets. This allows you to store assets on both EVM and non-EVM compatible networks. For example, my Trust Wallet account has multiple wallet addresses. I can use this address that starts with OX to receive any asset from any EVM compatible network. Within the same wallet, I will be given a Solana address and a Bitcoin address. This allows me to send any asset via these two networks to the same wallet as well. There are other wallets that are specific to a certain non-EVM compatible network and one such example is the Phantom wallet. Phantom is one of the most popular wallets on Solana and you are only able to store assets from this network. Which EVM and non-EVM compatible network do you normally use? You can let me know in the comments below. Now that you know the differences between these two network types, check out this video here where I go through the 5-step process that ensures that you never lose any funds when making a crypto transfer.